Uh, first, I'd like to thank all of those who have shared wise thoughts and perspectives here today. What has been said here today is only the beginning of SHE. Today, we saw its first contours. What we heard here today strengthens my belief in that SHE may be the opportunity we have all been waiting for. An opportunity to put sustainability in health as well as in education on the agenda. Those two are interlinked. Striving to reach one does not work without also trying to reach the other. Mahatma Gandhi once said, if we are to teach real peace in the world, we shall have to begin with the children. For today's occasion, I would like to take the liberty to rephrase the quote a little and say, if we are to achieve a sustainable world, we, ha we shall have to begin with the students. Because what really makes me believe in the vision of Xi and how Xi, with his ambitious plans, encourages students to claim the driver's seat and thereby, thereby transcending the generational boundaries. Some may think, is that really wise? Students are known to be bold, impatient and visionary. Or should we rather say, instead of visionary, a little bit unrealistic? I believe that what she has set out to do, let students claim the driver's seat to make a more sustainable healthcare and eventually a more sustainable world, is both wise and right. To solve such a complex challenge as it is to make a sustainable world, we have to be bold. We have to do things that has never been done before. Maybe fail a couple of times but always get back on the horse and impatiently, impatiently give it another try. The challenge of making a sustainable world doesn't solve itself. There are enough powers in the world that will always say, wait, is that wise? Is that right? Shouldn't we rather wait? Impatience is therefore a must to outweigh those who would rather sit still than act. We have to give it a try again and again, and we have to start now. It might sound like I'm encouraging us to reach for the stars. Maybe it all sounds a bit unrealistic. I'm sure many said the same things about Martin Luther King's ideas or Ruth Bader Ginsburg. People say today about Greta Thunberg. Visionary people and visionary ideas have often been deemed unrealistic through history. But to achieve real change, we have to reach far ahead, further than what may be realistic in the moment. But there are always those who try to step on the brakes, those who say wait, and those who slow the change process down. But I, will, I believe she will overcome those powers, because she has teamed up with the students. By doing so, we have made sure there's always someone willing to step on the gas pedal and speed a little ahead. Can the students do it all by themselves? No, definitely not. Like Anne Kvang Lee said, we need to combine, combine bottom-up and top-down initiatives. We have to co-pilot. But together, with a strong leadership and bottom-up initiatives, the possibilities are endless. And as a student, I'm eager to see what we, the students, the staff, she and the surrounding world, will achieve together. Today certainly strengthened my hopes that it will be something great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Olina. Uh, we now have, will have a word from Jens Petterberg, who is a pro dean at the medical faculty. Please, Jens Petter. Uh, so uh, I've been invited to give some of the closing remarks from the Faculty of Medicine. And it's a great pleasure for me to uh, uh, express congratulations and best wishes to the Center for Sustainable Healthcare Education from the faculty. We are very impressed by the efforts that all partners have contributed with to make this center come true, both in the planning, in the writing, in the rethinking, maybe also some arguing, revising, submitting, presenting, and finally convincing the evaluators that we need a center for sustainable healthcare education, and we need it now. It's been really exciting to follow you and the evolution of the application process on the sideline, cheering and applauding, and now finally congratulating you. And actually in this very moment, proudly exclaim that the faculty for the first time ever has a center for excellence in education. And I also want to thank uh, DQ for the financial support of the center. Now why this project and why you and why now? 
Uh, these three whys are frequently asked when challenging new projects and ideas. And the three whys can also be posed to the idea of a center for sustainable healthcare education. Uh, during this webinar, we have had excellent presentations which have answered the why this, why you, and why now. Eivind Engebessen and Kristin Hagen have shown us uh, the bold ideas. They have an ambition to educate change agents in healthcare using UN Sustainable Development Goals as a guidance. What could be a more appropriate answer to why this in the midst of a pandemic as described by Trisha Grinnell? At the same time, we must not weaken our attention to the other serious health challenges. The last special issue on global burden of disease earlier this month optimistically announced that the fall rates of age standardized disability adjusted life years of DALI since 1990 have been the largest for communicable maternal, neonatal, and nutritional diseases. And progress has even been fastest in the past decade. However, uh, once again, data shows that uh, health depends on more than just health systems. The Lancet points to a strong correlation between health and the social demographic index and suggests that the health sector should consider redefining its scope of concern, which fits with the vision of she. So why you then, the young generation, the students, you have really committed yourselves and actively taken part in shaping the center. We have listened with great interest to Vivian Andersson and Tiril Separared explaining the need for SDG implementation in education. And we have heard Amanda Hyllands Pjellnes, Sine Grude and Ida Sibir Sherlan present a student-led project about Norwegian Somalis in the corona pandemics and also as commented by Anne Kvang Lee. And finally, Willina Setter commented on student involvement in the center from a medicine students uh, committee and she board perspective. The participation of students is of vital importance when you have to set out to educate change agents and perhaps redefine the scope of concern in healthcare as suggested by the Lancet. Such an endeavor starts and ends uh, with education and re-education in a continuum. You need a foundation of change-friendly and change-willing minds with an experience and knowledge as is exemplified by the lecturers this afternoon. I would say, she, you have a brilliant team, which clearly answers the why you question. Uh, Ole Petter Ottersen reflected on the university's responsibility to rethink higher education in light of the SDGs. The EU policy report entitled or the 2030 vision on the future of universities in Europe proposes that European universities has to transform to effective generators and transmitters of trusted knowledge of innovation and developers of talent in order to address key societal challenges. Every one of you and the center with its human and other resources will be an important tool to transform the University of Oslo in accordance with such a vision. And finally, why now? Although the global burden of disease has diminished during the last decades, the healthcare costs have outpaced global economic growth the last 20 years. Newt Lundin exemplified in his lecture the dilemma related to treatment options and expenditures and possible solutions through education. An OECD report predicts that the growth in healthcare expenses will continue to exceed economic growth also during the next decade. This can, of course, not go on forever. The English broadcaster and natural historian David Attenborough calmly explains this to us in the documentary A Life on Our Planet. Anything that we can't do forever is, by definition, not sustainable. So we need sustainable healthcare now. The Faculty of Medicine and University of Oslo possesses a multitude of resources. Please engage us and use the faculty in your research for solutions. Invite yourselves to the institutes, to the departments, to the research groups, to the professors, even those uh, hanging in a horn on the wall as in the fairy tale. Inspire us with your ideas and let us take part in your mission 
to change healthcare education and foster sustainability and redefining our scope of concern. So there is no time to lose. I will therefore end now by this appeal and wish you all the best and success for the Center for Sustainable Health Education. I will thank the speakers for stimulating presentations and thanks to you all for attending the webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much.